Plus number two. Mindscope Games did pretty well in their first month, and now we're trying to put our money back into stock, and hopefully we do it intelligently so we grow. So I'm going to talk to you about my biggest order yet, and see what we get. So, what I did is I went to Board Game Geek, and I went through their most reviewed games. That means the most people played these, and took the time to review it online. Got some Warhammer stuff restocked here. Uh, but, this means I got games that are maybe from 2007, that have been around since 2011, that might be available in other places, like this game you could buy at Target. Uh, and that's a little riskier, because... Um, when you get games that have been around when they're not hot off the press, you got game stores that are going out of business and selling out their stock online. Um, but we're, we're going to see if we can sell these in Great Bend. So we got Risk Variants like Axis and Allies, those are staple games. Twilight Imperium. This is actually a pretty big risk for us because this is a $90 board game. It's huge. It takes uh three to four hours to play you can't play it with two people you have to have three and it's 14 plus so if we're marketing to moms and their kids twilight imperium is not the game for them but if we're marketing towards hardcore gamers this is a glorious game this is a fun game it's an epic board game uh, and it has really good reviews we'll just see who grabs that so we also have games like lords of Waterdeep, which is a dungeons and dragons staple game that's a classic lots of people love it we have historical games like San Juan, where you see if you can build an economy, um, and if you can succeed there. We have Forbidden Desert. Now this is an easy entry type game. Uh, so this is two to five players. A couple can play it, ages 10 and up. It's a Mensa Select game, which means those, those brain people like this game because they know games build brains. That's how we answer our phone at Mindsculpt. We say, Mindsculpt games are games build brains because we believe a family playing this game or a dad and son playing this game, or two friends playing this game, they're building a lot of skills. Um, so this game isn't on that top list, but it's got attractive packaging or something, because I've actually sold through two of these. And you might say, wow, Darcy, you've sold through two? Well, the thing about our board game shelves, which are over there, we have about 100 on the, on the stocks, uh, but we don't have more than one of pretty much anything. Because we want to have a variety, but we don't want to have a lot of risk in any one title. So, this Alice in Wonderland game that we've sold through twice and me picking up a third, I haven't done that with too many games yet. I mean, maybe Suburbia I'll sell through a couple because that's a good staple classic. Uh, but, our model right now is buy one, see if it sells, restock it if it does. We've been putting in an order a week. That's a lot of work because I do the orders and then we got to, when they come in, we got to bring them out and price them, stock them on our shelves. Uh, we actually added some shelf space, which I'll show you in a little bit. But we also have been doing pretty well with Warhammer, so that's our latest restock there. Uh, we got staple games like Bang, but with a variant. So this is Bang Halo. Bang is a great card game, quick, easy, fun, lots of challenge, three to seven players. Uh, we've played this at the Schaffner house with the kids. Uh, and honestly, it says eight plus on it, but there's a lot of bluffing and a lot of intrigue that goes on that it makes it really scalable. So lots of board games here, and the thing about board games is they're beautiful, but they take a lot of space and they might sit on the shelf for a while. So me bringing in, uh, I don't know, a thousand dollars worth of board games, it's a little risky uh, because Seven Wonders, people can buy that in Target, they can buy it in Walmart, are they going to walk into Mindscope Games and buy it? Well, actually, we've sold quite a few of these. My husband and I love this game. Our extended family loves this game. It's a very good card deck building game that is similar to Magic the Gathering drafting. So if you like draft nights, Seven Wonders, it's one of the best board games you can get. Look at all these awards. This game has what it takes. There's expansions. Uh, Small World is another risk variant. It's a lot of fun. It's not a large world. It doesn't take a lot of time. So when I say risk variant, the main variation from risk is right here, 40 to 80 minutes. That's as big as your board is, but you play a race like elves or zombies or vampires or whatever it is, uh, and you only play them for a little while, and then you go on to your next race and you try to gain as many territories as you can by the end of the game, which the end of the game is always a set time. You get eight rounds there. If you want to check out Small World and think, well, is this game for me? Well, we have Small World in our free game library, and we have a calendar up here. And you see this date right there, the 12th, it says board games, 4 p.m. 
We're going to play Small World. So if you want to come play Small World at MindScope Games, 1401 Main and Great Bend, we have tons of events. Don't ever say there's nothing going on in Great Bend unless you check our calendar and it's Tuesday because we're not open yet. Okay, but look, we got all these board games. Now another boom and bust factor. Me personally, I am a woman, I'm a mother, I'm an educator, and I've been a magic player since age, I don't know, 12, 1995? I guess that means nine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I sold my first card at age 12. But these are all games from the Haba line, and they're built for families to play together. So Picasso is actually an art game that is for ages eight plus, so not the baby, but the rest of the family can play. It's gonna take you about 30 minutes. Look, the English is at the bottom there. So this is one of those German games. They make lots of good games in Germany, but it's meant to be fun, it's meant to be easy, it's meant to build those skills. So we got Lady Richmond, and here you're looking at Court Intrigue. We got some dragon games, spookies. This is an absolute favorite in our house. This is Eli's favorite game, I bet. Munchkin Treasure Hunt. Look, I ordered two. I don't order two of anything. Why did I order two? Well, because one of my best mom friends wants this for her kids, because I talked about it, and we talked about the math skills and the reading and the fun factor, and how Eli begs to play this, and then he's tricked into reading cards in order to play. So he reads for recreation. Yeah, that's a mom win. This educator mom likes that with board games. So this game's real easy to play. If your family knows Munchkin, there's some extra excitement for the parents and the kids. Uh, but it's easy, approachable, and skill building in the meantime. So we brought in a lot of habit games. Brandon the Brave plays kind of like Carcassonne. It's a tile laying game. Real easy, real fun. It's five plus. So let's say you have a six year old, an eight year old, maybe a 12 year old. This is a great scalable game that your family can play in 10 minutes. This is a steal of a deal. It's only 15 bucks. That's at least a day of family entertainment. I mean, how much do you spend if you go to the movies, right? Uh, but board games are a great way to build up the family as you're looking through it. Now here, all right, Darcy, how risky are you getting? Spinners are on the edge of the fad. Are they gonna last through August? I really don't know. Now I am an educator and I don't know what's gonna happen in schools. Are they gonna ban them? Are kids gonna want them still? But I'll tell you what, we have adults that come into MindSculpt games and bring their spinners in as they're sitting at the table. And I have a computer job and I sit with a fidget cube and I use that during my desk work. So, uh, anyway, we're gonna stock what other people in Great Bend don't have. So we have Suicide Squad spinners. Do you have a Harley Quinn spinner? We do, and they're only 10 bucks. So that's part of our plan. Uh, we got Batman spinners. Well, we got Bat spinners. So this is only five bucks. Let's see if we can sell that. Uh, we have oil slick or rainbow spinners, five prong. Like this is probably my favorite feel for this one. It's a little heavier, it moves fast, and as it moves, look at all those colors. So actually that one's been pretty popular. And then we got flower spinners, circle spinners, whatever you want to call them. They spin pretty fast, they're light, they have a nice feel to them. Uh, lots of variety. But, but this is actually, ah. Uh, this is a lot of my money in spinners. Are people gonna buy Superman three-pronged spinners? They look kind of generic, Darcy. Are they gonna spend 10 bucks for that? Well, it's cheaper than the big chain stores. I know you can find spinners at Walmart, but you can't find a Kansas City spinner. And even if you can find a Kansas City spinner at some sports store, the $10 price tag is actually lower here. So why do I bring in spinners? Are spinners gonna sell out for me? I don't know, but we do stick them in our window and we try to drive in traffic of people that might not normally uh, buy board games. So I'm gonna actually take you to our window and I'm gonna show you a little bit of our marketing. So we added the shelving, that's our free game library up there. Then we have our gondolas with all our board games and that shelving over there, that's actually what I added this week and our order's gonna go on that, but we are growing, so we're in that process. So I'm gonna take you to our front door. There's our big banner. Look, we also finally added our, uh, our window decal. And then right here, this is Main Street, so people walk right here. And this is why I'm investing in spinners, because I'm hoping this window display right here shows them things they've never seen before. And they say, Mommy, Mommy, I want to walk in that store. And then we can introduce another family to MindSculpt Games and how games can build brains in Great Bend. So, uh, there's actually a lot of risk in that last order that I showed you. It's a lot of money. Uh, and whether or not I sell through those board games fast enough for that money to be worthwhile is kind of up to Great Bend because I can't ship those very easy online. So what I got here 
is a good chunk of our first month's profits put back into growing the store. I got spinners, I got family games, I got classic staple games, and we'll see how they do. Let me know in the comments what you think.